The Blue Jewel. Chapter 7. Part 7. Kush was left alone in the tavern, the wizard drinking some sweet wine as he flipped through his spell book. With a small pen he made some notes, as was usual with him, sometimes he even drew some scenes, without meaning to an Arian came out with excited eyes when he saw the great towers of magic, it was innocence personified. Little did the young woman know how terrible Tripulia was, she turned the pages of her book backwards, as far as I had precise notes made five years ago. De Boak had recruited him for the company, few mags acted as mercenaries and were of questionable behavior so he was immediately recruited, but there was a problem. De Boak was very scrupulous with the rules and didn't want to have any problems with the council of mags. So he forced Kush to register with Tripulia and pass the exam necessary to practice as a magician. It wasn't really cumbersome, it was simply a matter of paying a kind of permit in the registry. The management was quickly processed by means of a bribe and the examination was no more than a mere formality, requiring the payment of another bribe. Already Kush was disappointed with the wizards of the north, everything had become a business to maintain his privileges, but he would never have thought that this went so far in a subject that in his homeland was sacred. Necromancy. Magic can never be used to play with death or use evil forces in the magician's favor. Although magicians have always been on the latter side of the line. But as for necromancy, all over the world it was something persecuted and it was because the goddess of death, Fanny, was very scrupulous about this, many who have played with her trying to deceive her have ended up cursed. So much so, that the story of the necromancer Aldomir was very famous. Except that there was one small detail that wasn't told in the traditional version of the story. Aldomir was a grand master of an order that was removed from Tripulia upon learning of its activities, the tower was torn to the ground, and Mags fearful of Thani's wrath built a temple in honor of the goddess. But how do you fight necromancy? When it is rumored that most high wizards play with it and Kush proved it at that time. The trip to Tripulia was a disappointment. Attempting to enter any tower of any order was impossible for him, as he was not a member of any of them and the council's library only allowed access to books for apprentices. So trying to learn anything else was impossible for him. So he decided to spend one last night before returning to Almera, that night to say goodbye. He wanted to see how the towers twinkled under the light of the white moon that was in the full moon phase, a spectacle worth admiring. When he returned to the inn, he went into one of the alleys of Tripulia, infested with merchants, thieves and prostitutes. Kush was dodging all kinds of propositions when in the background he saw something that was not normal, a blue glow and as a young prostitute seemed to ask for help, the magician approached to see what it was, their worst fears were realized. The young woman was being unceremoniously murdered by two men dressed in black, the magician stopped them and soon discovered the reality of Tripulia. Those men were necromancer magans who were dedicated to kidnapping or killing, and when they could not steal corpses, to sell their victims to magicians involved in black magic. There were two of them, one tall with straight black hair and the other plump and with a prominent mustache. The tall mag threw the girl to the ground and pulled out a sword. Kush was very fast in the art of summoning spells and always used his favorite called lethal lightning. A simple but tremendously effective spell that he used against the first Magin who did not expect such a devastating attack and fell to the ground writhing in pain, his sidekick disappeared into the crowd. Kush approached the young woman but she was already dead, what kind of spawn would kill a girl just for money, when he turned to examine the body of the fallen attacker, he had disappeared. The wizard was impressed, he had survived his attack, no doubt imbued with the power of death magic. He brought the terrible crime to the attention of the competent authorities, but what he found was total passivity. Albion's guard told him that what was happening within the walls of Tripulia was the business of the mags, and the council told him that they would investigate, but they did not send anyone. The wizard himself paid out of his own pocket for the funeral at the temple of Thani and investigated on his own. The victim was a young woman who had come from the south fleeing poverty to earn some gold at the expense of the young magic students, she had not been in the city very long. A perfect prey, it took him a lot of time and gold to find out the truth, 
There was a whole mafia dedicated to kidnapping and killing all kinds of victims to use them in dark rituals, but no one wanted to speak frankly. They were prey to fear. Rumor had it that they were very powerful, capable of capturing vampires, werewolves, and anyone if the price was right. What did the council do? Look the other way. The magicians themselves were his main clients and this was a fact known to all. People took measures such as not going out alone at night and if that happened they tried to be in very busy places and neighborhoods, but they were never completely safe inside the city of magic. Kush left Tripulia disgusted and told to Boak what he had observed, the warrior showed him a series of letters he had in his possession. They were from desperate parents, kings asking for help since in their kingdoms there were a number of inexplicable disappearances of their subjects. But the company did not take care of these cases, they were mercenaries who were experts in protection and low-profile missions, although with some special clients they had made some exceptions. Their investigations ended in nothing conclusive, but everything pointed to one place, Tripulia. Remembering all this the magician closed the book tightly, what was created as a place of light was now a pit of corruption. Indignant, he went to bed.